Welcome back, everybody. Wicked Sources, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day broadcasting live from Los Angeles. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon, so I hope you guys are getting ready for your weekend. I'm your host, Mike, and every week I bring you news info that could affect you, including alternative products that can bring a little comfort to your life. So if you find some value, smash the like for the algos. Subscribe if you want more. There's a lot happening in today's segment. It is called Know Your Cannabis. When I opened up my trusty Google feed, it bombarded me with a lot of things that are happening at this very second and I'm sure you want to know about it so let's dive into this video all right so top story is cannabis recall statewide never happened before so what is really going on we're gonna dive into this it's a curious situation we're talking about almost 400 dispensaries affected thousands tens of thousands of pounds um, in question and this is spanning over two months of sales so how do they catch this what do they find and uh, what are they doing about it let's read about it a little bit more so if you bought cannabis recently in the state of Michigan chances are you should return it it is likely the largest cannabis recall in Michigan's history and it's currently underway it was announced Wednesday through a bulletin. The agency said it has identified inaccurate or unreliable test results for all cannabis pro uh, products tested by Veritas Labs. The bulletin said products should be retested for microbials compliance, that it can uh, potentially have mold. So mold is not uncommon for cannabis. There's PM and various types of mold, insects pro insect problems. The Veritas representative said they are working on it with officials to resolve the issue. The CEO, in quotes, is saying, while we strongly disagree with this decision and firmly stand by our test results, we are fully cooperating with the MRA. So cannabis lawyers are saying that there are several dispensaries affected. Um, they're also saying that for many retailers, 65 to 70 percent of their inventory could be recalled. We are talking around 64,000 pounds of cannabis. Now, consumers who have purchased this cannabis and have it in their possessions that meet the recall criteria can return it back to the dispensaries where they purchased it so it can get disposed of properly. The test dates were between August 10th and November 16th of this year. And the batch numbers are these right here. So if you have any of these batch numbers, return it, get your money back, and maybe call your street dealer. This is a pretty serious matter. It's never happened before. And I wonder, well, how do they catch it? Why is it that two months already lapsed, two months of testing, and tens of thousands of pounds are being recalled now? You know, 10 years ago when lab testing was, at, was in its infancy, many of these were overlooked. Dispensaries overlooked them. If it was really bomb bud and the powder mildew was minimal, they'd still buy it, but they wanted a discount. I was talking to a recent cultivator, um, and he was telling me the same thing. They'll still buy it, but they want a much cheaper price. Uh, chances are they have a market to unload it on, someone who will still buy it. Um, from powdered mildew, what we have learned is that, for the most part, if you don't have underlying conditions, it's unnoticeable. It'll still get you high, doesn't really make you sick. But for those with underlying conditions, uh, like the ones mentioned in that article, it can affect you. It can have some negative impacts on your health, especially if you're consuming a lot of it in a short period of time. So be careful. Let's move on to this next story. So in this article, in Connecticut, they have identified cannabis that has been laced, laced with fentanyl. This is fucking serious. I can't believe this is even happening. So let's dive into this one. State health officials warn of cannabis with fentanyl after reports of overdose. The Connecticut Department of Public Health is working with law enforcement as they investigate reports of overdose patients who claimed to only have smoked cannabis yet suffered overdose symptoms similar to those of an opioid overdose. In at least one of these cases, the cannabis in question tested positive for fentanyl. In many of these cases, the patients had to be revived with naloxone. It appears at least one person has died. 
there have been dozens of these cases reported across the state um, since July. July of 2021, 11 cases. August, 9 cases. September, 9 cases. October, 10 cases. Several of these overdoses occurred in Plymouth, and a sample tested found that the cannabis tested contained fentanyl. So, in quotes here, this is the first lab-confirmed case of cannabis with fentanyl in Connecticut and possibly the first case confirmed in the entire U.S. Fentanyl is highly potent and one of the leading causes of overdose death in our state. In quotes, we want people to be aware of the fact that there are some illicit cannabis supplies that could contain fentanyl and to be careful. In a recent Facebook post, Waterton police say there have been several incidents involving illegally purchased cannabis laced with fentanyl, and there was one case in the area where someone overdosed and died. The state believes more overdoses are likely because the illicit drug market is becoming more volatile. DPH says sometimes fentanyl could end up in the cannabis accidentally if people sell different drugs, but sometimes it can be added purposely to make it more enticing. In quotes, if you are chasing after a higher high, you have no idea what is what it is being laced uh, with. So public health officials are warning cannabis users to be aware of the dangers of fentanyl, signs of an overdose, constricted pupils, the person is unresponsive or limp, the person is awake but unable to talk, slower erratic breathing or no breathing, slower erratic pulse or no pulse, skin is pale gray, or blue, especially around the fingernails and lips. The person is making deep, slow snoring, choking or gurgling sounds, and or vomiting. To give you an idea of what fentanyl is, according to the CDC, it is a pharmaceutical fentanyl synthetic opioid that is approved for treating severe pain, typically in advanced cancer patients. It is to be 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. unbelievable that this is actually happening why would anyone want to lace it with fentanyl they did mention it could be done accidentally i can believe that if you're in the illicit drug market you're selling cocaine and heroin and and uh, fentanyl and cannabis um, and maybe psychedelics if you have a broad range of um, drugs and chemicals you're working with then you know it's not like these people have any moral compass they don't really care if there's any mistakes made or any contaminations. They're still going to sell what they sell. So that could be a potential. But the idea that it can actually be done intentionally to enhance the high of cannabis is insane. Cannabis is nowhere near the high of something, let's say, heroin. Why would you want to compare the two? It just blows my mind. So... If you are in Connecticut or in surrounding states, please be careful. If you have access to medical cannabis or recreational, buy it from the dispensaries. You're going to pay more, but it's a lot safer. You know, typically in my earlier years, I were I was encouraging to go through local farmers, local cultivators. That way you can save some money and it... Um, the purpose of me supporting these people was because many of them were affected by recreational laws. Many of them weren't able to participate in these new laws because they weren't compliant. And so I felt their pain for people who had started early and were able to build a small business for themselves and for their families were pretty much asked out. But now that the drug market is evolving, and as they put it in this article, it's become volatile, it may be the safest thing to go through a dispensary. Still, as you can see what happened in Michigan, it doesn't, um, it doesn't disregard the fact that there's still issues. At least that was recalled. Anchor.fm. If you've ever wondered about starting a podcast, now is the best time. Anchor.fm allows you to record, add music, transitions, and so much more. They'll even help you distribute your podcast to multiple platforms all automatically anchor.fm try it today today's episode is partly sponsored by accept all cbd all accept all products are built on the groundbreaking two-site technology 
that has been successfully applied to cannabidiol molecule, producing the next generation of CBD. By combining CBD with a water-soluble absorption enhancer, the CBD gains significant advantages over traditional CBD such as a minimum of 300% improved absorption, faster onset of effects, and dramatically increased shelf life. Let's see what's up next here. Cannabis delivery driver robbed at gunpoint in Martinez. Where is Martinez? Uh, it is in California. Brazen daylight armed robbery of a cannabis delivery driver is causing concern. The armed robbery went down as the delivery driver was dropping off a cannabis shipment. This was an unscheduled delivery, and when the security guard came out to investigate and learned that a robbery was underway, store employees were alerted and the dispensary went into lockdown immediately. No one was hurt. Police say there were three suspects that took off in a newer model black Honda sedan with a small dent above the rear license plate. They got away with a large quantity of cannabis and some of the delivery driver's personal possessions. Those who live or work in the area find the brazen daylight armed robbery worrisome. It is worrisome. Why wouldn't it be? Let's be honest. Um, it's just weed. You know, when did um, when did we start going after just small fish. Generally, it's warehouses that are targeted because of the large quantities of cash they hold and the large quantities of products they hold. And more often than not, those are inside jobs. You know, uh, a cousin of a cousin, a friend of a friend who worked inside of a facility as a trimmer or this or that, knows the ins and outs, and then they break in, um, steal fucking everything, and take off. Um, those are usually the targets, but a delivery driver? I mean, how much weed is this guy really going to have? Not to mention, there's so much saturation. These armed suspects, where are they going to unload all this weed? It's kind of silly. Um, at, at best, they're going to sell it for lower than market value, just to get rid of it quickly, like $100 ounces. It's not a ton of money, but the, um, the dangers are very real. Now, Congress has been trying to pass a law that helps dispensaries, cultivators, and the like be able to open up bank accounts because right now, most of them can't. So they're sitting on large stacks of cash, dispensaries, large stacks of cash, either in a vault or in a safe on-site or off-site, which makes them targets. It is sad to see that this is happening. It breaks my heart that uh, people within that community feel like they're at risk, but you know, look out for each other. That's all I can say. Just be aware of your surroundings. And, you know, if you're in the cannabis game, just watch your back. Don't carry too much and only deal with people that you know. So this was probably an inside job too. Remember, it said it was an unscheduled delivery. So how did they know he was going to show up? Someone must have said something. The next story is also pretty interesting. So this caught my attention. Using cannabis in pregnancy linked to aggression, anxiety in children, a study is suggesting. How much can we quantify its, its study? We'll have to see. So more and more women are using cannabis in pregnancy, but they, want, they may want to think twice. Researchers found a link between cannabis use by expected mothers and autism and childhood psychosis. A small study has shown cannabis use can affect the placenta and may be linked to higher levels of anxiety, aggression, and hyperactivity in children. The U.S. researchers looked at 322 mother-child pairs based in New York City who were part of a wider research project on stress in pregnancy. When the children were between 3 and 6 years old, hormone levels were measured from hair samples, electrocardiogram recordings were used to measure heart function and behavioral and emotional functioning was assessed based uh, parental surveys. Well, this was interesting to me and it was, um, it was important because this was a concern of mine too. My wife and I were smoking a ton of weed before we found out that she was pregnant and it was like three months in 
So, in quotes by this doctor, this new study supports a growing body of evidence that smoking cannabis during pregnancy is associated with adverse outcomes for women and their children. We know from previous studies that using cannabis during pregnancy is linked to impaired fetal brain development, stillbirth, low birth weight, and preterm birth. This new evidence adds to these existing safety concerns, suggesting that cannabis use in pregnancy could lead to higher anxiety, aggression, hyperactivity, and levels of stress uh, hormone cortisol in the children. So as I said, this was a concern for me. We found out that my wife was pregnant about three months in and we were smoking a ton of weed. It's, it was part of our lifestyle. We were, um, you know, pretty active. But um, after we found out, she stopped smoking cannabis. And, uh, you know, it was a concern since then. Luckily, you know, she's about to be four years old now. She doesn't show any signs of any of those things that were mentioned. Over the years, I've spoken to many uh, professionals in the cannabis industry, um, whether they're scientists or medical professionals. Uh, many of them were proponents of cannabis use uh, while pregnant for varying reasons, and that during that period of time, there were no studies that suggested there would be issues. However, nowadays, my concern is, is with recreational cannabis. The cannabis is so much stronger compared to back then, with very little cannabinoids, if at all. So I wonder if there's a link between that and the symptoms that these children are seeing today, because the cannabis of today is much stronger compared to the cannabis, the medical cannabis of, let's say, five plus years ago which had much higher cannabinoid levels. And this is where some of these experts I was talking to felt that there were no side effects of cannabis use if you were having that type with higher cannabinoid levels, lower THC levels. Um, so who knows? Rather interesting. And then we have this one. Study finds that workout highs are real. Cannabis-like substances released after exercise. Well, I can tell you that it is one of the things I love about working out. It is invigorating. It the the high that it creates is very real. After all, we are a chemically driven species, mind and body. So, new research finds that exercise can stimulate microbes in our guts. These microbes can produce pain and inflammation relieving substances called endocannabinoids, which is the same system that cannabinoids from cannabis react to and react with. So it's important to talk with your doctor before you start any exercise regimen, which is silly because everyone should exercise. New research finds that exercising can increase production of our body's own cannabis-like substances, which reduce inflammation and could potentially help prevent conditions like arthritis, heart disease, and even cancer. Hard to believe the ever-growing cancer. The study published in the journal Gut Microbes found that people with arthritis not only experience reduced pain, but also lowered levels of inf inflammation. Inf Level, lowered levels of inflammatory markers called cytokines and increased levels of endocannabinoids, which are substances naturally produced by gut microbes in our microbiomes. In quotes by a doctor, the microbiome plays a key role in many bodily functions such as digestion and the immune system. So for the, stu uh, for the study, a research team from the University of Nottingham 38 participants performed 15 minutes of muscle strengthening exercises every day for six weeks, while the other 40 did nothing. Researchers found that those who exercised not only reduced their pain, but also had more of a type of micro, microbe in their guts that produced anti-inflammatory substances. The participants also had lower levels of cytokines and higher endocannabinoid levels. In quotes, endocannabinoids are naturally occurring neurotransmitters that are produced in the body. He added that these substances are tied to various functions and influence things like mood, energy, memory, appetite, and pain levels. The findings are novel as we may have found a key link between how substances produced by gut 
microbes interact with the substances produced by our own bodies, which tell us how physical exercise reduces inflammation. Absolutely fascinating. So, as I said, the cannabinoids in cannabis and the cannabinoids by themselves, like CBD, interact with the endocannabinoid system, the CB1 and the CB2 receptors, as well as many other parts of that system. So, it's interesting to see that exercise activates these microbe um, these microbes in our guts that also interact with the endocannabinoid system this is really interesting research I personally like working out because of that high that I get um, it's uh, it's rather nice it's it feels it feels so like empowering but there's another case too so NASA had released a very specific, uh, um, research study that they were conducting in the space station. What they saw were as uh, there is no gravity, but they were having astronauts work out doing um, you know muscle strengthening exercises. What they saw was that the body was sending signals to those areas specifically to get it to strengthen. Now, in terms of muscle mass, that makes sense. But what was interesting about this study was these muscle strengthening exercises were also sending signals to their bones, specifically telling the bones to increase in density. This is because in space there's no gravity. And what we have seen through testing is that bone density decreases when you're in space because of lack of gravity. This is why they do the exercises. So imagine what it's like here on Earth. If you're exercising, not only are you sending signals to your muscles to grow and grow in density, but you're also sending those same signals to your bones, telling it to grow in density. Incredible studies. This was some years ago, so it's an old study, but still very relevant. Hope you guys had fun. That's all I have for you today in this segment of Know Your Cannabis. If you found some value, smash the like. Subscribe if you want more like this. Know Your Cannabis is a segment all about cannabis, through and through, and keeps us all informed of what is going on. So, catch you guys on the next one.